What is Transformering? When and how have you started this project? Transformering.se is a web-based bank of facts regarding like loads of things trans, like healthcare, sex and safer sex, uh, close relations in a broader sense, um, rights and laws, and other stuff. And it's um, the projects, well, we're working in a second project. The first project started in 2008 and then the site launched in 2009. And now we relaunched it in May this year, like a new, bigger, updated version. As one of the reasons for starting this website, you mentioned a lot of uncertainty considering the Swedish healthcare system. Could you tell us something more about it? There are six uh, different gender identity teams spread out through Sweden and they're not, uh, they're working fairly similarly but uh, there are also a lot of differences. A lot of these teams try to keep their, uh, or seem to try to keep their existence a bit hidden even if we go to a website where, uh, for a hospital where we know that there's a gender identity team, this is often not listed on the website, so it's, um, it's like uh, um, mythical creatures, it's hard to get a hold of them for, for many people. So, and there, when we started there was also a lot of uncertainty about the gender affirming process. Um, what are what are the different steps? Um, how do I get a referral to one uh, to one of these teams? Uh, so basically, when the page started, it was like listing all these facts. Like first you go there, then this happens, and this happens, and th this is how it's supposed to work. If it doesn't to tell someone. Carl Åkerlund and I'm working with uh, RFSL Ungdom, the Swedish Youth Organization for LGBTQ Issues. What are some typical problems you encounter in this line of work on a daily basis? We have this support mail that we call the trans mail where um, young trans persons or anyone really can mail us questions concerning anything trans related. And we mostly get mails from uh, young trans persons, but we also get mails from their relatives or persons like that. And we'll have mails uh, from persons who don't get the basic rights that they should have, uh, especially maybe in issues related to healthcare. But we also get mails from persons who feel that they can't stay at home because their parents won't have them. Um, we get pers mails from persons saying, uh, I want to get to a gender reaffirmation process, um, but my psychologist won't let me. Um, we get mails like that, and yeah, lots of, lots of mails where it's really upsetting to see how uh, professional persons all around society really uh, deny young trans persons their basic rights. A lot of the work is about advising and empowering and trying to find motivation within this person. Um, we would really much like to be able to be that support uh, to, to ourselves uh, fight for this, these issues but we get uh, more mails than there is time to answer just uh, mails basically. So. Um, this is the way that we can work with this now, that we try to offer support, advice and also of course to find uh, professionals who are willing and able to really support them. But all the time saying like, okay, you could contact this person, which we know for a fact is 
really great and really amazing. But if you don't feel bad, good with that, if that doesn't really help you, we're still here, we can still help you. We will always be able to answer any mails you will send us. As one of your goals, you mentioned challenging the idea that binary trans people are the only trans people. Could you explain this a bit more? I think that in the, well, in the LGBT, community in general but also within the trans community there is a norm that you are expected to be a binary trans person that is either be a transsexual or maybe a transvestite which is I would say the most common perceptions of what it is to be trans so that means that even within the trans community non-binary trans persons like intergender persons for example are much less visible um, but also uh, have an even harder time in order to have their rights. Uh, for example, the, the trans healthcare, of course, is the most visible arena or area where it's perceived that this is only for um, transsexuals, for persons who are FTM or MTF. But uh, because of that, we see that it's really necessary to make the trans health system more available for non-binary trans persons um, but also in general I think we need a visibility in culture and within the trans community of non-binary persons. During your presentation you told us about a project you're working on now. What is it about? What we're working on right now is a project called NARA. All, all the things we do is basically project funded so we get money to work for one year, two years, three years. So right now we've been working for two years with this project called NARA or CLOSE, which it means. And uh, the aim of this project is really to support uh, young trans persons in their close relations. And with close relations we mean your family, that could either be the family that you grew up with or the family you have chosen yourself. So it could be relations to partners as well as to your parents or siblings or uh, classmates maybe. And we see that before we've been able to, to provide information concerning the healthcare. That's been like step one. But now we need to support young trans persons in these very important areas as well to offer information on how can you build a, a positive relation to your parents and how can you handle the conflicts that appear for a lot of young trans persons. But also, even more important, to offer sex positive, sex information and sex education, which for us means, for example, to find terminology and words that we can frame sex information with, so it feels available and affirming for persons uh, that don't but can't relate to a cis-normative uh, sex education or sex information. So basically, we've been trying to find words that can, uh, that, that can make sex ed education and sex-positive uh, information feel as it, it's something that really concerns you, even if you're trans. As I understood, Swedish has a gender-neutral pronoun. Do you use it actually, or is it just written on paper? Before in Swedish, there has basically been two pronouns for a male and a female pronoun. Um, but then for, for a long time within the LGBT community, there's been a, a, a third pronoun in use, which is gender neutral. So it's, of course, something you can use in order not to state the gender of anyone, but as well something that people who identify as non-binary can use for themselves or hire, ask others to use about themselves in a third sense. Um, and this is caused when it was like introduced in a mainstream context, it caused a lot of debate. Like some of the major Swedish magazines and newspapers were like, we won't use this third pronoun we won't have it in print. Um, so it's, it's caused a lot of debate and like on, on Twitter and of course everything was like fire and flames for some time. But now it's, uh, it's really been introduced. You'll see it in writing in uh, all the daily newspapers. 
uh, it's been introduced into like the official Swedish uh, uh, word uh, list. Um, so it's really, I think it's it costs it's it's cost a change really. So it's really been effective.